Today I'm on a side street in Pueblo, Colorado, and if you've managed to make it to this video without seeing the thumbnail or reading the title, then surprise, there's hover trains here. Yep, genuine bona fide electrified six car hover trains. Well, only one of them is electric. Two are actually powered by jet engine. Now, why are there three hover trains here in Pueblo, Colorado? That's because Pueblo is home to the Transportation Technology Center Incorporated, which is used for railroad testing. And that actually got its start as a Department of Transportation high-speed ground test center for these three hover trains. Behind me is the Grumman TLRV, the long one you can see the butt of is the Roar Aero train. Behind both of them is the Garrett version. Now in the 1950s and 60s, the increase in cars was leading to congestion as well as pollution problems in inner cities, specifically Los Angeles. And the Urban Mass Transit Administration was looking for solutions to both congestion and pollution to get in and out of city centers. Japan, Britain, France, and the Soviet Union had already started using monorails and monorail type trains in order to get people in and out of city centers. And nowadays, a lot of monorails use a magnetic field to raise the train over the tracks, which can also be used to accelerate it. This eliminates friction entirely, and energy is consumed as efficiently as possible. In the 70s, though, air compression was used most often. In the case of the TLRV, a flat concrete road with vertical sides, almost like a concrete tray for it to drive in was utilized. And it used three turbojet engines to provide and create a pillow of air, a cushion on which it could hover on and then be propelled using the jet engines themselves. Eight airbags with hinged rubber skirts and shock absorbers in order to protect it against the sides of the concrete track were used. And supposedly it could reach up to 300 miles per hour going from zero to 270 miles per hour in under three minutes. Problems arose though because it was only fast in a straight line and had to slow down to about 90 miles an hour in the curve, which was an issue when you're using turbojet engines as it greatly reduces their efficiency as they have to power up and power down the engine. This slow cornering, the braking issues with the turbojet efficiency as well as the special track requiring it to be built deemed it impractical to pursue. Behind me is the Roar Aero Train, which was propelled by a linear motor. It could carry 60 passengers at 150 miles per hour up on an air cushion over top of a monorail. It used two 40-inch lift compressor fans and was powered by a high-voltage electric railing that ran along the side of the track. The Roar Aero Train actually didn't have any windshields and used cameras on the front and back for the pilot to see out of. Problems with the Roar Aero Train included it requiring a special track to be built, the noise of the motor, as well as the technology at the time, limiting its capabilities, as well as the electrical hazard of having a high voltage line running the entire length of the track. That, as well as anyone who was close to it any time it was operating, was getting blasted by sand coming out of the cushions. Supposedly, though, once it was up on its air cushion, you could push the entire structure by hand. The last and smallest one was the Garrett Linear Induction Motor Research Vehicle. It was the only wheeled vehicle and could fit on a standard gauge railroad track, which is a great benefit. It used a 3,000 horsepower gas turbine generator solely to supply the linear induction motor with electricity. It could travel 187.9 miles per hour, but was limited by the test track as well as its acceleration times. Eventually, Garrett added two engines to it in order to increase the speed, and in 1974, the linear induction motor research vehicle set a world speed record for 255.7 miles per hour, a record for a train on a conventional track. Now these three hover trains are cared for by the Pueblo Railroad Museum, and I called them and asked if I could access them, and due to COVID restrictions was unable to, but if I'm ever back in Pueblo, maybe we'll get to see the inside. If you enjoy the content, enjoy the video, please subscribe, and as always, until next time, get lost.